Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Our YouTube channel. And in the video today, Roger Courtney and a watery gamble, the establishment of the SBS. Described by the BBC as the shadowy sister of the SAS, the Special Boat Service, more commonly known as the SBS, is likely one of the most well-trained and elite Special Forces units around the world that few in the world have ever heard of, despite performing countless harrowing missions, dozens of hostage rescues, and more than its fair share of daring nighttime raids, going all the way back to World War II, when an officer by the name of Roger Jumbo Courtney risked a court-martial to demonstrate to his superiors just how valuable a unit like the SBS could be. Little is documented about Courtney's life prior to his military service in World War II, other than that he was an avid big game hunter and an adventurer in Africa for a number of years. This is particularly important to the story at hand, as he often regaled his fellow soldiers with stories about hunting lions and other big game in a canoe. When Courtney heard about the outbreak of World War II, he returned to Scotland and enlisted in the military. Sometime in 1940, he began serving with the now defunct No. 8 Guards Unit. Almost as soon as he became a commander with the number no. 8s, Courtney managed to score a meeting with the Admiral of the Fleet, Roger Keyes. In the meeting, Courtney tried to sell the skeptical Admiral on the benefit of using canoes to quite literally hunt Germans. He argued that small collapsible canoes could be used to silently sneak where powered boats could not. Keyes summarily dismissed Courtney's proposal, stating that canoes were better suited to the Boy Scouts than the Army. Undeterred by Admiral Keyes' lack of vision, Courtney arranged for a meeting with another high-ranking military official, Admiral Theodore Hallett. This was in the hopes that this admiral would see the benefit of his proposal. Like he's though, Ballard dismissed Courtney's idea outright. Frustrated with how quick his superiors had been to dismiss his proposal, Courtney, later described by Major David Sutherland as a hard-drinking white hunter with a big line of bullshit and a persuasive tongue, came to the conclusion that the only way to prove that his idea could work was to put it into practice. Four days after his failed meeting with Admiral Hallett, Courtney silently paddled a canoe along the River Clyde and stealthily climbed aboard the H. HMS Glen Guile. Once aboard, Courtney sneaked his way to the captain's quarters and scribbled his initials on the door. Just for good measure, before leaving, he stole one of the ship's deck gun covers, which had the ship's name on it. Courtney then slyly slipped away undetected and made a beeline for the nearby Argyle Arms Hotel, where he knew Admiral Hallett was currently meeting with some military bigwigs. Once there, Courtney waltzed up to Hallett's private room, reportedly dressed only in a pair of swimming trunks, barged in, and proudly proclaimed that he'd just managed to sneak aboard the Glen Guile and make it to the captain's quarters unmolested. When the captain of the Glen Guile, who just so happened to be present at the meeting, scoffed that his ship could be infiltrated in such a way, Courtney unroyals the deck and gun cover, then placed it on the table. Although Courtney had committed a potentially court martialable offense, as well as risked getting himself mistaken for an enemy and shot during the infiltration of the Glen Kyle, the fact that he'd been able to do this and make it to the captain's quarters without being spotted during wartime while half naked to boot so impressed his superiors that they reconsidered their stance on how effective soldiers with foldable canoes could be. After his stunt, Courtney was asked to provide another demonstration, this time sanctioned, infiltrating a submarine depot ship. When that was a success as well, he was promoted and given command of 12 men. He trains these men in clandestine operations, as well as the use of the Fulboat, a collapsible canoe made of rubber and wood that could be assembled or broken down rapidly. The Fulboat Brigade, as it was known, carried out numerous missions during World War II, most notably paddling into an enemy port near the mouth of the Gironde and destroying several key ships harbored there in an operation that Winston Churchill claimed accelerated the end of the war by six months. As for Courtney, despite being highly involved in the grueling training of the first waves of SBS commandos, he wasn't with the force very long, having to return to the UK due to health issues. He was ultimately relegated to a desk job and died a few years after the war ended. Today, though, his legacy lives on in one of the most terrifyingly effective units of soldiers on Earth. Bonus fact. To join either the SAS or the SBS, you have to pass an infamously brutal and unforgiving selection process which involves a month of grueling physical exercise, culminating in a 40-kilometer march across the harshest terrain in Britain. Then there's nine weeks of training in the jungle, 14 weeks of training in demolitions, reconnaissance, and a variety of other advanced combat tactics. This culminates in something known as the Survive, Evade, Resist, and Extract training, which involves releasing the recruits into the woods where they are hunted down by Royal Marines, who will then interrogate 
isolate them for several weeks using sleep, food, water, and sensory deprivation. If a recruit fails during any one of these or gives an answer other than their name, rank, date of birth, or army number during the interrogation process, they will fail. Additionally, recruits hoping to join the SBS are required to undertake several more months of water-based training, which involves learning how to do such amazing things as infiltrate and exit submarines while they are submerged and diving out of planes into freezing cold water in near-zero visibility. Unsurprisingly, over 90% of recruits who apply for the SBS or SAS fail. Recruits hoping to join the SBS or SAS can only apply a maximum of two times before they're barred from ever trying again. The SAS and SBS work in alternative six-month-long shifts, during which they will train constantly to keep their skills as sharp as possible. These training sessions are understandably rather secretive, but are known to involve live-fire training exercises and mock raids on potential terrorist targets to test their security. In one of these such raids, the SBS broke into a nuclear power plant in Scotland in less than a minute, exposing various issues with security at the plant. With regards to the live-fire training exercises, the SAS and SBS are said to always train using live ammo and often use real people as hostages. The SAS in particular is known to invite foreign dignitaries to take part in these exercises to demonstrate their skill and composure. If anyone's wondering about the differences between the two units, while they are fairly similar in terms of reputation, skill, and basic training, as their names would suggest, the Special Air Service specializes in aerial combat and parachuting, whereas the Special Boat Service has an affinity for water-based and amphibious combat. That said, the SBS has been known to take part in land-based missions when the need arises, and vice versa. Both units also set aside a small, constantly rotating contingent of men for counterterrorism duties who are on call 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Despite their close proximity to one another, the relationship between the SBS and SAS is a notably chilly one, with both units displaying various levels of animosity towards one another. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also over there on the right, a couple of other videos that you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one, and thank you for watching.